Hello my friends, how are you all doing? Welcome back to the channel and my friends finally welcome back to an episode of Jammy Conservation Park. Uh, today is not as it seems though, I'm going to explain all in a moment. First and foremost though my friends, I will bring your attention to last episode. It's linked above right now, it was some time ago. Uh, apologies for that but it is linked above my friends. If you've not yet seen it, go check it out. Now today I'm going to give you a small and very quick update on Jammy Conservation Conservation Park. I want to run you through a few, prob a few problems that uh, you know I'm facing, and we're all going to be facing, unfortunately, as a result uh, where this series is concerned. But today, uh, I thought this was the perfect opportunity to not only update you on the series, but to give you an up-to-date zoo tour of Jammy Conservation Park. Um, a lot like the last tour, I've deleted the grid that we use uh, during the course of the series. Um, I've basically turned all the settings off as well, so that we can walk around the zoo and there be absolutely zero problems. Can I just say though, with the grid deleted and from this angle, how beautiful does Jammy Conservation Park look? Uh, it is all your hard work, uh, basically all your fantastic ideas of how we have got to this position my friends but first and foremost let me get you up to date on jammy conservation park lots of people have been asking where jcp's been what's happening with the series uh you know why has there not been any new uploads and so on and so on now I it took a little bit of a break from Jammy just before Christmas. Uh, I said I was going to do that because I wanted to work on some other projects. Um, spoiler, there are new projects incoming, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, if you are a regular on the Twitch channel, you know all about them already. Uh, we are going to be making some new series. Uh, we are going to be doing uh, some smaller builds um, to tr basically try to kind of get around the issues that I'm facing with such a big project like Jammy. Uh, so essentially, guys... Uh, that's what's going to be on the channel probably more so than JCP until I can get around the issues where Jammy is concerned. So the problems I'm having with Jammy Conservation Park at the moment is that when I'm working on the zoo, it doesn't always save what I build. So it's not updating properly when I save the game. As a result, as you can imagine, sometimes I can sit on you know big projects like this for hours on end building and to save and then come back in and it not be there is massively demotivating and you know it it, it makes you not want to you know use the zoo use the save i want to say that this isn't the same problem that i had with highland with highland i i couldn't build that would crash dump me out of the game um i'm not having that problem with jcp i can still build i can still go in i can still walk around the zoo i can still enjoy the project the trouble i have is it just doesn't update when i'm building uh when i save it so at the moment we're having to take a small break from Jammy Conservation Park until this problem is rectified. I don't near and I don't know if the game needs patching um, by Frontier or if there is a back backways option uh, that I can sort this out with. Basically, I've contacted people on the forums. I want to see if there's other people going through this issue. There are. Uh, there are people who have got in touch and said they're suffering with it. I know one of the viewers uh, of this channel is suffering with it. I know quite a large YouTuber in the Planet Zoo community is suffering with this problem. So I am hoping it's something that Frontier is just going to have to patch. We will wait and see. Obviously, I'm, I'm, I would imagine the devs have been contacted. As I've already said, I've contacted um you know, people on the forums, and if I ever get crash dumped, I always leave a review and a, a reason why it might have happened. So it's one of those things. So unfortunately, JCP, we can't really build in it at the moment, but this is a prime opportunity to bring you all up to date with a zoo tour. And that zoo tour starts now. Now, I am going to be having the game playing. Now, there might be times where I have to pause it. There's parts of this zoo that are just not very smooth when I have it playing. You can imagine with 4,000 guests, all the animals, all the pieces, all the detail, uh, it's quite the strain, even on my very, very good PC. So, um, yeah, we will see what we can do. Now, I'm at the big entrance. I like to call this the main entrance. I'm at the main entrance. Um, lots has changed since the last tour. Um, I did go and watch the last tour back because I thought to myself, it's all well and good doing a tour, but are we really in a position to do a new one? I think we are. I think we've actually added a hell of a lot of stuff since that last tour, and I think it will be really, really interesting, gang. So, uh, five minutes of the video are done. That's all the uh, admin. That's all the updating. Let's tour this zoo. Uh, it is going through one of those moments where it was just having a little think about it then. Uh, that's going to happen, unfortunately, just because this is such a big project. I just want to throw it out there. There's 
God knows how many animals and 4,000 guests walking around the zoo with all of the detail and whatnot that uh, that is in it anyway. Now, for anyone that's new, I will obviously go through every bit of the zoo. And for all the OGs, you'll probably just like looking back on some of the bits that are quite ancient. And let's be honest, the entrance is pretty ancient. This was done a long, long time ago. But uh, for anyone that's new, you get to enjoy it for the first time. Now, this is the main entrance. Uh, obviously, just a nice main entrance plaza, as you can see. The traffic people moving around nicely. The path does actually come down here, but obviously this is just the quickest route uh, out of the zoo, obviously, into the car park, um, which probably needs a bit more finishing off but money and all that we we do have to keep an eye on that sort of stuff where the project is concerned but yeah we'll come back to this because i'd like to do a little backstage stuff first because uh this obviously is sort of our backstage staff seated area then we've got sort of um you know veg patches we've got greenhouses uh and storage and stuff like that i was thinking to myself uh obviously when i was taking a look at this before doing the zoo tour yeah you know, whether or not we need more stuff back here i know i need to finish off these planters a little bit um probably and uh i think maybe we could probably extend this on and have more stuff back here we don't really have anywhere to store things like hay uh and stuff like that it's all well and good having all these fruits and vegetables growing but what use is that uh if you don't have all the other bits and bobs obviously we have like a little tree nursery as well uh that was an idea put forward which i i really really like but this is quite a nice little area actually it's a nice little it's a quiet area the staff will use it and I think the staff will probably use it more when we get the animal hospital put in up here. But uh, you do see the staff every now and then just walking through as a, as a, a bit of a, a quicker way to get up here to North America, basically, and behind the scenes of uh, our South American area. So, yeah, it's a pretty nice, chill little area. Um, I will walk you around it. I'll show you stuff in a bit more detail so that you can really take it all in. The greenhouses are something that I am uh, ridiculously proud of. I went with this really, really funny shape, but highly detailed. Um, yours truly just loves using way too many pieces, basically. <laughs> and I did it again with these greenhouses, as you can see. Um, but yeah, we take a little a walk inside and uh, it's all it's very, very nicely done. Um, and... Uh, I just absolutely love these little things. These are these are these are all the details, in my opinion, that just really bring a build to life. Uh, not much really happens over here. The, the guests don't come over here. The staff really come over here, but it brings this area to life, and it was a nice little uh, a nice little space filler because we were never going to be able to put animals and stuff back here because it was backstage area um obviously a lot of stuff's been removed like the grid's been removed which is why this area here isn't really finished but eventually i probably will take this fence all the way along continue this planting all the way up here just so our guests don't see any of the backstage stuff uh, you know the plan is eventually is to have sort of an animal hospital back here anyway so um that's probably what we will do with it but let's head back to the entrance and uh we will walk in this way it is going to have moments like this i do apologize but um it's just there's a lot going on where where the project is concerned so uh we are going to have these little moments where it does just the you know heart skips a beat basically uh, but yes this is our main entrance as you can see you get your tickets and stuff over here um our little ticket offices we have used uh you know information kiosks to kind of make this but uh it's effective it does exactly what it says on the tin it's always people there queuing up waiting to get their tickets um our entrance our exit our gift shop uh i have realized i still need to just finish this off we've got our disabled access exit but um you know if this was actually a realistic zoo anyone could just walk in and out over there so yeah a little strange uh over here you get like a little sneak peek of our flamingos. Uh, the flock is doing very, very well. I'm not sure actually if a group of flamingos is called a flock. I would imagine it is. Most groups of birds are, but um, you know, it, I could I could be completely wrong. But yeah, you get a little sneak peek uh, of those. A little sneak before you go into the zoo. Um, so. In to the zoo we go, ladies and gentlemen. That's the entrance. Now, to the right, you have got the guest services, um, which is basically where you can hire things like push chairs. Uh, you can get your, your your wheelchair access. You can hire a locker for the day, and all the lockers are over there in the corner. And we'll just show you so you can see a bit more. But yeah, you can hire a locker for the day um, to store your things. 
uh, as you can see, you've got your, your wheelchairs and whatnot. I've made these little rides. I need to put a few more of these around the zoo using different animals and stuff. But uh, yeah, it is exactly what it says. Basically, it's just a guest services building. I'll take you inside so you can take a look. I did put a bathroom in here just so it looks as though the building's being used. But um, yeah, the guest services building actually turned out really, really nice. Um, it was a bit of a late addition compared to the rest of the entrance, but we had to wait until the space was uh, was all unlocked. Uh, and then if you rotate round, you do have the gift shop uh, over this side. And again, the gift shop wall is still not finished. It's one of those things I just keep putting off and putting off and putting off. But there is a nice little seated area here uh, as you first go in, uh, while you're sitting and waiting for someone to pick out their gift or while you're waiting to get going on your journey in the zoo. Um, but yeah, we will just take a quick dive into the gift shop so you can see uh, what we've managed to do in here. I still really like the gift shop. Lots going on, lots of detail. Um, and uh, I just love the, the shape of this building uh, inside and out. I love all the different angles and stuff that you get um, with the glass and whatnot. And uh, yeah, I think it came out all right, this building actually. Um, this wall is the wall I'm on about. I'm, I, I've decided this design here, yeah, I'm just going to continue it at the top and be done with it because uh, we don't really come in here a lot anyway and uh, it just needs sorting out just because it's plain. There isn't really anything else I can do with that, unfortunately. So I think that's what I'm going to do. But yeah, as you can see, it's just so much going on in the gift shop. A big money maker for GCP is uh, this. Um, so you will see these scattered all over the zoo. Uh, these were just my little sort of um, my little snack stops that uh, that I've created. You can get drinks and ice creams and all sorts of stuff. Now it's really really busy here, um, and so I'm not sure what the computer is going to do. It might have an absolute um, it might have an absolute meltdown. I'm not sure, but let's keep everything crossed and pray it's okay. Now, it's so, so busy because there's very, very popular animals at the beginning, but you do come to your very first animal. This is our nursery for our Aldabra tortoises. So the younger tortoises during the warmer months come in here. Um, they are an African species and it kind of fit in with the whole Madagascan feel of the... Uh, of the lemurs which is uh, one of the reasons why we did this but it's a really popular habitat as you can see so many people uh, over here taking a look and enjoying the aldabras um, which is good to see plenty of the little uh, mites in here uh, really really enjoying it lovely and lush um, just a little entrance point at the back for our keepers all of our backstage area uh, all kind of like links up in its own sort of ring uh, to make it easy for our staff to move around basically and um, I implore you to all kind of experiment with this sort of thing um, where the game's concerned because it will really help you maintain the animals better because when you get to levels like this it's so hard for your staff to get through the crowds so yeah just just explore those options basically gang um so yeah, that's the Aldabras. And then you kind of walk in here. I, I've realised I do need to finish this planter off. Um, I thought I'd done it. But again, that might be one of those things where I did do it and it didn't save because of this little problem I'm having. I really hope that they, they patch it or we can get to the bottom of it because I, I don't want JCP to die. I really, really don't. Um, but this is the Lima Island, ladies and gentlemen. This is the hard shelter. I will just back up a little so you can see the hard shelter um, but yeah this is the hard shelter to Lima Island this is the staff facilities uh, staff quarters here and they've got their entrance point um, and there's a bit of the back and whatnot but there's uh, quarters here and then there's quarters here for the animals basically uh, this area here is for indoor viewing mainly and then this here is where guests can't see you always want to be able to give your animals you know time and we for anyone that is new this is a realistic project we're trying to build a very realistic zoo so i'm obviously reading lots of details and uh, trying to find the best way to do it but um you know you want to obviously give the animals space for themselves as well as space for the guests now this is uh this is the area that our guests see lovely little mural on the wall lots of information lots of education and um yeah i'm absolutely i still love this it's still one of my favorite builds i've ever done um and it was nice to do the lemurs now this is their indoor quarters as you can see it's it's madness it's lots of climbing frames it keeps them very active keeps them uh keeps them interested basically um but yeah lots and lots going on um what on earth happened there
he must have unboxed, he must have got stuck somewhere. But uh, yeah, all rummaging around. Now, that does go to backstage quarters where the uh, staff would take a look at them and whatnot. It's closed off, we don't need it open. But yeah, you come around this way. Um, they do have a, an exit out the top here that goes into this little piece at the front that our guests can see quite close. And then this was the other section I was on about, the other backstage area. Look at this guy chilling under here. That is a very strange place to be sat. Um, yeah, this is the other quarters, basically. It is a bit glitchy with the and any animal that climbs on this game because uh, it's just the way the climbing mechanic works. But there's so many lemurs. They, they've, they've had baby booms. It's gone a bit crazy, but there's so much activity makes it so fun to sit and watch. Now, this is the area that our guests can watch uh, the animals over this side. Uh, they can get a little bit of a view in here. My whole thing was that I wanted to plant this up. And I just haven't really got round to it, but they can see the animals here. But the best way to look at the lemurs is, of course, on the boardwalk. And this boardwalk here uh, connects to... What the hell has happened to that bench? Okay, that's that's very, very strange. <laughs> what? How does that even... How has that even happened? Um, <laughs> that's really weird. That's very, very strange. I'm not going to bother touching it now, but that's really weird that that's even gone in over that, that way. I'm not even sure that's possible. But as you can see, this is the best way to look at the animals is obviously on the boardwalk. Uh, nice little bit of covering if it ever rains, but it's so, so busy. It's always so busy over here because the amount of activity. But the climbing frames uh, are absolutely beautiful, all working an absolute treat. Animals loving them. And, uh, yeah, you've got the island part of the exhibit as well. Um, which the lemurs spend more time on than they do anywhere else. I will be honest with you. Um, and there's not really too much over here. There's no food over here because our staff can't get here. So, um, but everything else is here. As you just see, knocking the boxes all over the place. It's just a crazy, crazy habitat with lots going on. But a very pretty habitat, in my opinion. Um, a very, very pretty habitat that I absolutely love. Um, that's not me pausing the game, that's the game having a meltdown um, again, <laughs> because there's so much going on. But yeah, that's Lemur Island, gang. I love it, absolutely love it. But if we flip reverse and we go back this way, um, you will see that there is a little ice cream stall in here, very busy, as you can see. Um, we come around this way and uh, we have a bathroom with a little map and stuff. Uh, for our guests, they're all getting stuck at this bench because uh, they have the IQ of a slug. Um, it's going to do this. It's going to do this. Um, if we would let me move on, that would be great. Okay, you can you slingshot me back. But yeah, we go around this way. And we come to the flamingos. It's going to get noisy now, gang, um, because the flamingos are very, very noisy, um, which is one of the reasons why zoos put them at the start, because it draws people into the zoo. So if you didn't know that, you now do, my friend. But they're a very popular animal to put at the beginning of zoos because of the amount of noise they make. But uh, the uh, flamingo pool is looking really, really nice. Considering these were the first animals we put over in this part of the zoo, I actually think that this habitat has aged quite nicely with the zoo. Um, it, it, you know, it didn't need to be anything special. We just wanted to have this shallow part up here, a deeper part at the, at the end, really lush, go heavy with the uh, heavy with the foliage. And I still think it's really, really nice. It's got a really low-key hard shelter as well. Lots of education and information. We have this lovely little fountain area around here as well, which I will come to in a moment. But yeah, the flamingo habitat is still very, very pretty. And as you can see, the flamingos are thriving. So many of them uh, enjoying the habitat. Lots of uh, young, as you can see as well, which is uh, really good. And they're actually starting to use this part of the habitat as well because there's so many of them now. So it's nice to see all of the habitat uh, being used. Really lush. Love it. Absolutely love it. And it's nice to do these tours because I get to see the animals moving around and I get to see how the habitats work as well. Um, something that we don't get to, to see very often, uh, to be honest with you. I'm just going to check something. Um, yeah, I've, I've, I've basically what I've done is I've, I've turned the weather off because I don't really want it raining and all that sort of stuff during the tour. So just wanted to make sure I'd done that. And yeah, this is their hard shelter. Really basic um, and just does exactly what it says on the tin, basically, ladies and gentlemen. Now, if I come around this way, this is one of two Conservation Club walls. Now, um, lots of people get involved in this series 
for anyone that is new uh, and wants to know about the series, basically this uh, series is controlled by the community. Basically, you guys leave your ideas in the comments and stuff, and you know the best ideas are what get built. So the animals that you suggest. Uh, the way the habitats are built. I'm literally the master builder. Uh, all the rules can be found, um, you know, in earlier episodes. If you are interested, go visit them. Um, or just join me when I'm doing a proper episode and uh, you can get involved in the comments and leave your ideas. We do stream this series usually twice a week. At the minute, we're not because of the problems that we face, but usually it's twice a week that we stream this series. And these are just a few of the names that have got involved uh, to this point, basically. And... Uh, we immortalise them on Conservation Club walls and in this lovely sort of fountain area uh, over this way. Now, there's two ways that we can go now. We can either go over to the restaurant or we can enjoy the wild gardens. Now, there is a path that will just go all the way up here and it will take you to the sort of reptarium, the camels, the gemsbok. Um, or you can go for a walk in the wild gardens where... The peacocks all roam around, um, and also we have got some backstage area as well to take a look at. But let's go uh, this way when uh, when it lets me. Let's go this way, and we'll take a walk through the wild gardens, ladies and gentlemen. So this is, um, you know, the wild gardens from the, from this part. Well, this is the wild pond garden. Um, as you can see, you've got this beautiful pond in the middle with a water feature and whatnot. Um, and yeah, it's just a really nice, pretty area to be. The water does go from here over to the other side, um, as you can see there. And uh, yeah, there's still a little bit of planting that needs doing over here, but we are treating this series as though as the years go by, more plants get put in, we change them up because it feels more realistic rather than just planting, leaving it. Um, it gets more overgrown as the years go by, but um, lots of education and whatnot in here. Just a nice place to sit if you wanted a, a five minutes away from the hustle and bustle of uh, the busier parts of the zoo you can listen to the water and you can uh, enjoy the peacocks wandering around um so we continue up this way as you can see a couple of males these are mr peabody's boys um all of these are actually mr peabody's uh young for anyone that's wondering who mr peabody is if you are new he is an absolute legend at the zoo the oldest peacock on record i think he's like 31 years of age uh and he just refuses to die so we all absolutely love mr peabody and he's become somewhat of a bit of a mascot a bit like toby the galapagos tortoise who we will come to shortly but um yeah we carry on walking around and then you would walk around and and you exit the uh, you exit up here, ladies and gentlemen. And I think this is the, probably the prime opportunity uh, as we exit up here to go take a look at the restaurant. Now I'm going to pause while we take a look at the restaurant, just because um, I know it's going to be crazy. I know there's going to be lots of people in there, and um, it's just going to be a bit tough on the computer uh, to handle. As you can see, look at the amount of people up here. Uh, it is gone a bit mad. But there's this little area here. There's a few ways you can go up steps-wise. Um, again, this was covered up, so I'm assuming we've had a bit of an issue over here where stuff's deleted and hasn't saved. Um, but yeah, it's it's a it's a problem. It is a problem. This uh, this this thing we're going through. Um, as you can see, uh, for anyone that uh, joined me on the last tour, this area has changed. It's all actually been widened now. Uh, we've we've added two pathways because we had massive congestion over here at the Lookout Cafe. Um, Lookout Cafe is uh, in dedication to the looking out over over our lemurs and it must be a lovely place to sit and eat your food uh, but this is a good look at the uh, lookout cafe um, I love this building it's very different to anything else that I've I've made I'm I'm a big fan of flat roofs but tried something a bit different with this and um, I think it, it came out really really nice actually uh, but yeah we go this away now there is a, an entrance and an exit game doesn't use it in this way that's why this end is always so much busier and uh, as we go in you're gonna see that this restaurant has gone a bit crazy this is why I paused it ladies and gents it's just so many people uh, enjoying the restaurant but this is the only big restaurant that we we have really we've got a smaller one over in the reptarium we do probably need another larger restaurant to kind of take the strain off um we've got one over in the north american area but i'm not sure i would call that large i think that's probably on a similar scale to that of the reptarium's one but yeah this is our restaurant i absolutely love this restaurant um it took a little while to get done the way i wanted it to be done but uh i think we accomplished it and i think it does look really really nice and uh it just looks mental and there's so many people in here but yeah all these seats work 
um, all these seats coverings and whatnot, they all actually work. But yeah, if you can imagine sitting here and looking out and seeing the lemurs all jumping around, and if you look the other side, you can watch the kids playing in the in the in the park as you get ready to go on more adventures. Uh, you walk up towards the back, obviously bathrooms. I'm probably going to try to put something on this wall. Uh, the more I look at this building, the more I think this wall needs something. So probably going to do that and uh, bins and whatnot. And then you exit the restaurant a little way. Um, now I'm trying to think about the best way to go on the tour now. Um, probably to go this way, Reptarium back and then we'll do that. So if you were to walk up this way, ladies and gents, you can miss you can miss the, the pond and just walk up and then you would come to uh, the camels, which is uh, which is a, a fun part of the zoo. We all love the, the camels, another animal that is super, super loud and they make a load of racket. So you'll probably be able to hear them making all that noise. But yeah, lots of education. And I, I really like this, this habitat. It's really low key. Um, but it gets enough people and draws people up this way towards the reptarium. Um, lots of different types of education here, um, and uh, I think it just brings something to the area. Uh, lots of people enjoying this. It's going to get busy again. There's always lots of people up this way, um, so we will see how the computer handles it, um, but yeah, it might just be a case of pausing and playing and so on and so on. Um, but yeah, just a, a really nice low-key habitat. Now, if I take, give you a proper look at the habitat, um, we've obviously put this rock wall up. This is something that's really popular that zoos do now with hoof stock. Uh, it's a bit more natural, and it just makes a natural barrier between people and animal. Um, so yeah, it's really, really nice. As you can see, lots of uh, gates and whatnot that go to different places. Um, that one obviously goes backstage, and then there is another one. Uh, when the computer wants to catch up, there's another one here that goes to a little uh, sort of cor cornered off area where you might need to separate the animals and so on and so on. Um, but yeah, this is their hard shelter. It's really low key, doesn't need to be much more than this, um, just for locking the animals away of an evening. And also this gate does go out this way as well into their backstage area. Everything has been fought out with absolute precision. It does have to be said, uh, everyone. Um, but that's the camels. It's it going to do this, unfortunately. And it is a shame that it keeps doing this because it kind of impacts the tour, doesn't it? Yeah, if I show you this little backstage area while we are here, because obviously we do want to move, keep moving on. Um, lots of rubbish uh, over here. It's all materials that were left over from the expansion. Uh, you know, lots of storage, power units, water units. This is more of a power filter unit for the flamingos. And then this here is just like a kitchen. And we are placing these all over the zoo, basically. Um, these are areas where, you know, your staff sort of uh, prepare the food and whatnot for the animals. Um, and we've kind of gone with this recurring theme uh, of the buildings being built in a certain way. But yeah, as you can see, this is one of the main kitchens for the zoo. Uh, lots and lots of stuff going on in here. Lots of details, uh, you know, to bring the areas to life. I, I implore that you do this uh, if you are building zoos, even if people aren't going to see it that much. You know it's there, and it just brings areas to life. I just think it's nice to do this sort of stuff. I spend as much time on my backstage areas as I do. Um, as I do. Uh, wow, that camel really wants to be the star of the show, doesn't he? Uh, yeah, I spend as much time on my backstage areas as I do the, you know, the... the the uh, the guest facing areas um, because they're just as important especially if you're trying to do a realistic build now if we go this way i'll show you the gimsbok in a bit but if you go this way this takes us in to the reptarium now the reptarium was actually the first part of the zoo that was built as far as this project is concerned and you know um you know the, the story of the project is that it started out as a very small rescue center for reptiles uh the mikasa families as you can see the mikasa family they are the original people that started the zoo uh, and this is their foundation and so this area is the area that started it all this is this is where it all began for the mikasas as they were sort of reptile experts a bit like the irwins it is a very similar story to the irwins uh, it does have to be said and so as we go this way we enter the reptarium now what i'm gonna do is flip reverse the script now and i'll come back to this area because i would like to take you to the beginning of it and walk you around the, the in the the way that you're supposed to walk around the reptarium and it is from here now this was the original entrance ladies and gentlemen um 
this was uh, where you used to come in and buy your tickets and enjoy a day at uh, JCP. Now, over here, it's really, really, uh, it's really, really funny. It's really um, a bit glitchy when I'm moving around. And I, it's crashed a few times on me when I move around over here. And I'm not sure why. Uh, this is a big problem because this is an area we've been working on. For anyone that's, uh, you know... Uh, anyone that's been watching this series, you will know lots has happened here. We've had a huge upgrade and a few huge uh, update on the area. We've moved animals from in here outdoors. Um, you know, it's just it's had a, a real, real big update uh, in this area. But as you can see, this was the original sort of ticket office. It's a lot more low key than the other side uh, for obvious reasons. It was a smaller part of the zoo back in the day. And so we wanted to kind of continue with that smaller entrance, you know, in and out. Um, you can get your tickets here as well. Um, but this is uh, Toby. This is Toby's statue, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, he will be forever immortalised at the zoo. He's still alive and kicking. Of course he is. He's Galapagos stores. They live forever, don't they? But we changed all this up. There used to be a playground here. But instead, we've moved the Aldabras outside. Uh, this is their sort of spring and summer holding. Uh, and then they go away. They actually get put away uh, in the colder months. Uh, and so we turn this into a larger seating area, basically. And it just has helped the traffic move a lot better out here. Now, what I am going to do to take you into the restaurant is I'm going to pause it. Because, uh, again, like the other side, it goes a bit funny when you try and go in these restaurants because of the amount of people that are moving around. Um, lots going on outside. And then you take a jump in. And this one's just as busy as the other restaurant and i do think this is a lot of this is to do with the fact we don't have a lot of this stuff in the zoo uh, because we're trying to go for that realism and zoos just don't have loads and loads of restaurants it's just not how they do it they have pit, lots of pit stops and stuff like that and smaller little places to get stuff but they usually have one or two big main restaurants but yeah this this needs a little upgrade as well in my opinion i'd like to redo this interior um because i do think it's a bit dated but then lots of people don't want me to touch it because it's dated like the zoo, basically, because it would date because of uh, the part of the zoo it is. Now, there is some backstage stuff here. Uh, really not that interesting, but there's a staff area here. And then if you go out this way, it takes you into uh, the parking uh, bay, the behind the scenes stuff. Uh, where this area is concerned but it takes you to what like the security checkpoint here uh, and this is our staff center so uh, this is, was the new sort of the newest part that was added to the existing uh, original area and if you if i take you this way um this is the main staff hub of the zoo uh, at the moment for whatever reason that glass has disappeared in the window that's brilliant that's just what you want to see just so much stuff has disappeared it's very very strange um but yeah this is the interior of our staff building everyone um but yeah it's uh you know there, there's uh, there's kitchens there's research there's uh areas to sit and chill uh, as you can see Someone's taking a load off here. Uh, there's a quarantine for like reptilians and stuff there, uh, and then you've got your uh, you've got a veterinary surgery as well. Obviously, this is a much smaller unit than what we need now. We have uh, we have so many more animals, uh, but I love this building. I love the way it turned out. I love the shape of it, uh, the styling. Um, I really do think it come together really, really nicely. Why that's doing that, I will never know because it's the first time it's ever done that to me. Um, but yeah, it, it just turned out lovely, didn't it? And it's just a nice little sort of staff hubbings uh, over there. Lots of doors in and out of all these different places. And yeah, it just kind of works an absolute treat. Now, uh, this is in and this is out of Jaraf Nater's Reptile center jareth was the lad that came up with the original idea for the zoo so uh he was he will be forever immortalized uh by having that building named after him this is the aldabras as you can see it's just a really really low-key habitat nice little um you know outdoor building and stuff but um not much more needs to be said now i am going to take you in here whether or not this works when i press play we will we'll learn together basically ladies and gents but uh, i'm not going to hold my breath it's been a bit strange but we will take a walk inside and the first animal you're going to come to is one of the newest animals on the game and it is the caiman uh where on earth they are i do not know now this is a work in progress this habitat i'm going to be completely honest with you um i put it together i quite liked it and as time's gone on i don't like it so 
Um, I'm going to be making some changes to the habitat. Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to go about it. I think it's just the wall at the back. I don't like the wall at the back. And I think it's a pretty easy fix. But it is uh, it is getting there. Unfortunately, we couldn't get the caiman to dive. This area is just too small to get the, the depth in there. But um, but, but it, it does work, you know. Where on earth are the caiman? They're not even in the habitat, I don't think. I must have taken them out. I must have been working on it. Well, there you go. The caiman are, are nowhere to be seen. They're off exhibit. But <laughs> the caiman will go in there, uh, ladies and gents. That is, uh, that's going to be their forever home now. That's where the Aldabras used to be. So for anyone that's new, to kind of give you a sense of where the Aldabras used to be, they used to be in that space there. But um, yeah, instead... The caimans, but as you walk around this building, you get the you get the two species of iguana uh, over here. This uh, this one is quite cool because you can see it from the outside as well, should you wish. Uh, and then you walk on inside, and again, lots and lots of updates have been changed in here for the OGs that are new to it. We're actually going to update this entire interior on this building to look a bit more like this. It isn't going to be white. We are going to change colours. We're going to add details and whatnot, but it is going to be updated to be a bit more like this. Uh, rather than the old style that it was i think that uh, zoos do this where they eventually sort of upgrade areas of their zoo and uh, we're definitely going to be doing that uh, with this part because i just really really like this look i think it's a, a really nice a really really nice look and a really nice take on the sort of reptile feel uh, this is more of our sort of deserty sort of arid uh, you know uh, animals over here we've got our snakes uh, and we've got some lizards and stuff uh, all in these habitats and uh, yeah, we're going to put some stuff on the wall and really dress it up. But I really like the way those these this style of doing this has come out, where we really eliminate the box and we actually make that glass small up. As a lot of you know, the exhibit boxes for me are just way too large. Uh, this is um, our Galapagos tortoise. They do have a, an outdoor area as well. Um, but uh, we gave them a little upgrade. We put a little mural on the wall, um, which kind of looks pretty cool uh for anyone that's interested all custom lighting uh lots of people love the way the lights look in here um and yeah we continue the tour i'm gonna pull i'm just gonna pause it ladies and gents for this part for whatever reason it just doesn't like it um and it's a, a, a real pain to try and move around so as you come up this way um we actually have a species of frog here which we will move eventually over into sort of a building in the african area um because they that's where they are from and we don't really want amphibians in this uh area of uh the zoo uh you carry on this way and uh you will see that for whatever reason this where has this come from where has that come from? Okay, that's very strange. That's never been there before. But okay, now all of a sudden we're getting... We've got lots of weird stuff going on. I'm going to be honest. We've got lots and lots of weird stuff going on uh, in this project. And I don't I don't know why. Uh, and then we've got lots of species of snake. As you can see, there's one, one of those snakes is at the front so everyone can see. Um, but yeah, we've got our snakes and whatnot. That, that there's a bothering me a lot because I don't know where it's come from, because it wasn't there before. Um, I'm, I really hope we're not going to have lots of issues with this project, because this is this has been a labour of love, and we've all really enjoyed this project, building it and whatnot, and I don't want it to break. Um, and then you come this way. This is uh, our gear monsters. They all chill here in a sort of central section. We're going to give that a big upgrade as well. Uh, over here is like a little sort of shop, area because this was the original part and it had its own little shop inside the building where you could buy you know your plushies or a poster and stuff and then you come up here and uh, this is where our garials uh indoor area is now i wanted to give the garials a big upgrade i wanted to give their pool a big upgrade i wanted to change it all up as you can see it's started putting the planting in and whatnot um but uh the minute i started putting all the rocks and stuff on the pool um, it made the pool so small that they didn't have enough water and the big male couldn't go in. So I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I do, want to, I do want to give this a big upgrade. I want to really change this up. It looks nice, don't get me wrong, but I'd just like to change it up a bit. Come in this way and, uh, yeah, this is sort of all of their sort of uh, indoor area. They've got their, you know, mud wallow and whatnot. Um, and, yeah, there's lots of different ways to, you know, view the animals. Uh, and, again, we want to upgrade this area and, again... 
I don't know what's happening, man. There's so many pieces and bits and bobs that have I've gone missing. Um, and I, I have no idea why. Um, and it's it's worrying me a little bit. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, we come uh, this way. This was the original Conservation Club wall. Um, as you can see. These are the OGs of OGs. It probably does have to be said. Um, because they, they were here at the very start. Um, and I know a few of them still turn up regularly in the comment section and in the streams. But that's the original Conservation Club wall. There's probably still space on there actually for one or two more names. So probably should get that done. You come this way, bathrooms, and then we head off into Croc Corner. Now, if you go left, you've got Croc Corner. If you go right, you go into the Wild Gardens, which takes you up to another house. Um, I will show you the Crocs first. Uh, I'm going to leave this area on pause. Like I say, it's just a bit funny at the moment. So I'll show you the Crocs outdoor area first. So we've got the Garials outdoors over here. Um, it's low key. There's not really much to it. We just wanted to make sure that we got a bit more water and stuff outside. And then over this side, we have our salties. Now, their salties, uh, uh, hard shell is going to get a big upgrade soon. Uh, I'm going to delete this and try to build something else that's a bit more fresh, a bit new. And uh, just basically, it makes it easier uh, for the animals uh, because the big male, if we ever have to take him off exhibit, when we put him back, I have to delete after building to put him back. It's a logistical nightmare. So, um, yeah, the salties are going to get a bit of an upgrade as well. Well, but that's the uh, Salty's Pool there. And then, yeah, if we come this way, this is the Wild Garden. Now, this is actually where Mr. Peabody lives. Uh, he's in here somewhere. Uh, there's the female. Uh, but, yeah, we've got these uh, We've got these Wild Gardens with the sort of beehives and whatnot. Lots of education. And then uh, you walk uh, this away. And as you can see, lots of young peacocks all roaming around. And uh, I'm not sure where Mr. Peabody is. I know he's in here somewhere. I know he's in here somewhere. Um, just not sure where he's probably hiding away. Uh, he's a bit of a star, so he's probably getting a bit of a bit of downtime. Bless him. Um, but yeah, is he back here? No, he's not back there. I have no idea where Mr. Peabody is. He could be, could be hiding in the undergrowth for all I know. I know he's in here though. But uh, but yeah, that's the Wild Gardens, ladies and gentlemen. And if you walk up this way, the Wild Gardens takes you to another part of. Uh, of the zoo. Now, I am going to press play now. I'm going to, it should be okay up here because there's not as much going on. Um, so yeah, up here you've got the Komodo dragons. This is their sort of outdoor area. Um, I'm not sure if we've only got the one or if there's two or whatnot in here now, but we did lose one recently, so there might just be the one in here. Uh, but yeah, this is the outdoor area of the Komodos, and then there's a big sort of indoor viewing area. This uh, building's named after uh, John McLaughlin. This is John M's Monitor Manor, and uh, he was, again, another one of the OGs at the beginning, so got this building named after him. Little bathroom on the side, but we head on in to John M's, if it will let us. God, this is, this is hard work. This is hard work, I've got to be honest with you. But yeah, we head inside, ladies and gents, and there's lots going on in here. Um, we have our monitor lizard over here. Uh, this exhibit is currently closed. We're not sure what we're going to do with it. Um, so, it's yeah, it's currently closed. A bit of me is thinking I get rid of that and I might extend the monitor lizard's habitat over this way. Uh, we'll leave this piece in the middle, but we'll just put another glass section over here and make give the monitor a bit more space. I think that might be a nice thing to do. So um, that's a plan that I have that I might do just because we have no more sort of exhibit animals that really would need to go in. But this is a really unique habitat. Now, you do have to turn a lot of options off to build this. But yeah, this is a really unique habitat, uh, ladies and gents, um, and it was for our monitor basically. So as you can see, as a as a lower area down here, um, and then uh, as this swimming area, so that we can uh, let the guests see uh, them swimming around and stuff. Uh, but this is actually way too small for the animal. Uh, it really does stretch the limitations of the game. So you did have, I did have to turn a few options off uh, to be able to do it. But I think it worked out really, really nice uh, doing it that way. And as you can see, just bobbing about in the water. And it's a really cool way to, to view that animal because um, you don't really get to see it like that. But over here, we've got our terrapins, as you can see, on the bottom. Just chilling out and one on the rock there. But yeah, we put our terrapins in over here. 
as well and then you come this way and uh, I've done a little upgrade on the sort of information board and whatnot uh, I did think about taking it up here and putting more planting and stuff in here just to bring this building to life a bit more um, but yeah this is the indoor of the Komodo dragons uh, over this way so if you come inside this is their indoor area as you can see there's no Komodo indoors right now so um, not much to look at but just a really beautiful building once again and uh, something else to add to the zoo now if you come out this way this here is a nursery um, this here is a reptile nursery um, we've got two of these because obviously animals do breed and the uh, reptiles need to be taken off site and whatnot so if I take you inside you'll get to see uh, what we did here so basically what we've made is a few different rooms for the, for the reptile young, juvenile to, you know, come of age and then we move them on. As you can see, this Komodo has come of age and probably needs to be moved off site. Um, this is stuff that you, you know, you just need to keep up with, keep on top of. Yeah, we usually do this together in episodes and uh, obviously we've, uh, we've just not had a chance to do it. It looks like there's only one in here, just the one. So yeah, they need moving off site. Um, and then in the other side we've got more Komodos and again they have uh, reached maturity and all need moving off site there's three of them in here which is not a lot of room for three adult Komodos it does have to be said but they all need moving on now to brand new facilities brand new zoos and so on and so on uh, and then if you carry on moving up here we do have some tortoises up here as you can see they've not reached maturity well one has so that one definitely needs either moving on to exhibit or moving off site uh, and another one over there so work to be done when we get to do a proper episode uh, soon my friends so uh, yeah very very interesting stuff then obviously got a kitchen and research and whatnot up here um, uh, for the facility uh, if I zoomy zoom all the way out that's how you get into the back of the camels by the way um, so as you can see it all does a nice loop with the backstage area we've done all this building here you will see this is the other nursery ladies and gentlemen i've got this paused over here because again when i went inside that komodo house uh, the uh, sorry the nursery it seemed to have a bit of a funny moment but you come in this side and this is the other nursery that we've got uh, in here we've got all of our juvenile salties uh, all bobbing around in their pool and being looked after um uh, if you come up this way, this room is going to be an incubation room. Uh, it's not been finished yet, but we're going to put like loads of incubators and stuff in there for like eggs and whatnot. Uh, we've got a kitchen over here, and then in here we've got um, baby Aldabras, I believe, uh, are what we've got in here. Lots of them. Um, uh, and then you come this way, and this is where our baby gharials are. Now we have actually got more gharials like out on exhibit. Um, which I'll show you in a moment, but the ones that are left go in here um, And then you come up and there's another building that's the kitchen actually and that's more of a sort of research room uh, for the facility So yeah, we zoom on out backstage over here another sort of compost heap and uh, You know vegetable garden and what little seating area for our staff and then you've got your water pumps your electric storage uh, this is actually where our trade center is over here. So interesting way to just kind of hide it at the back of this building. And then again, you'll see over here more sort of backstage area, uh, you know, trucks and carts and uh, all the stuff that the staff would use to kind of maintain the zoo and whatnot. Uh, so, yeah, plenty of stuff back here as well i realize this video is going to be very very long because i've literally i've still got all this to do and we are quite a way into this video already um so that is all of that area i do believe i'm pretty sure i've covered all that security checkpoint over here again uh, because this backstage path is going to continue right on into the zoo but yeah i've covered all of that so if we come back over here I am going to attempt to press play and just hope that it works. Uh, this is our Gemsbok, uh, ladies and gents. And these are sort of our gateway into Africa. We've placed these here. They're not officially in the into Africa area. We've just put them on the outside. But it still feels that they are part uh, of the area. Gemsbok, again, it's a really low-key habitat. Lots of people have said to me that there's way too much foliage in here. And an animal like that would probably destroy it and eat it and whatnot. But... It just needed some life. It's quite a big habitat and it would have looked a bit dead without it. Um, so, yeah, that's the reason why I've gone with it, ladies and gents. But as you can see, they're thriving. Oh, our Gemsbok herd, uh, absolutely thriving, really enjoying it. 
um, and uh, as you go all the way up to the back you will see more sort of uh, you know shaded area for the animals they do have a hard shelter as well um, probably not enough hard shelter for the amount of animals we've got but it's one of the reasons why we've got this outdoor section uh, to this habitat as well they do have a backstage area back there which is uh, accessible this way so you can access access it this way uh, or there is a gate there as well so this is uh, backstage again for getting animals on and off exhibit and it all joins up you will see like it all joins back to you know all the uh, all the other areas now if we do come this way this is our into africa area i swung that around a bit quick didn't i so this is going to be our big sort of african safari type area um and we open this area up with a beautiful bit of signage some planting and whatnot and the first animal that we put in here was the african wild dogs uh heavily heavily asked for by the community and so that's what we went with. Um, it's a really, really cool exhibit and probably one of the exhibits I'm most proud of uh, that I've built to date in Planet Zoo. Um, not just this part where you actually see the animals, but the backstage is really, really well done, I think, in my opinion. I think I've done quite well to stick with the realism. Now, there's a few ways you can view the animals. You can go around this way and you can view them from this sort of uh, covered viewing area lots of uh, you know information over here we do still need to add a bit more uh, and we, we're theming the african area which is quite nice um we don't really do that but we're definitely going to do it over here and just really really cool ways to look at the animals as you can see they're all sort of at the back of the exhibit at the minute so um not really too much to to, to look at over this way but usually they can be seen down in the den and whatnot and it's just a nice place to look at the animals but if we come back over this way um, this is another way to view is uh, you would come this way and it's just a larger sort of viewing area a bit more open no coverage over here so you know you wouldn't want to be over here if it was raining cats and dogs uh, but more obviously information of the animals and just a better view of everything that's going on over it with the wild dogs and there's just lots of lots of activity and lots of them running around now if i was to just come back this way quickly this finishes off this area at the moment as you can see we've put some temporary fence up uh that's obviously where new exhibits and stuff would go um again more stuff like this and it joins up to this backstage area in here we are going to put some stuff um we are going to fill that area in and finish that off just to get this area finished um and then yeah as far as the backstage is concerned for this this is sort of sort of our staff entrance point here um and then this is their backstage building this is their their hard shelter uh, and we have this very sort of unique way of letting the animals through uh this way we have uh another sort of kitchen i'm not going to take you inside that's essentially the same as the other one and more sort of power and water units uh but yeah if you was to take a little walk inside here um you will see the way that their sleeping quarters and stuff have been built so there is actually a dog in here which is quite cool to see but yeah this is um this is the indoor area to the wild dogs um and as you can see just heavily detailed once again and uh three rooms middle room can't be accessed but uh i really like the job that we did over here with the wild dogs basically it's just a nice exhibit now this is actually very new from the last tour we didn't have that last time uh, so we can look at that um we've still got lots to see and i'm already 50 odd minutes into the video now i don't really know how to cut this down any more than i can it's uh it's gonna be a long video it's just one of those things um but yeah we've still got all of this to look at ladies and gentlemen so strap in get ready because we're about to go into uh the south american and the americas area actually because obviously we go from south to north uh but yeah this is the initial sort of gateway into south america you've got this uh you you've got this playground uh to the side um we obviously demolished the, the smaller one that was in the original area and we just go with this uh this larger playground now uh that services the whole zoo at the moment uh walk up this way there's lots of different ways you can go in south america you can either go straight up and eat as jaguars you can go indoors where you see stuff like uh capuchins and tapirs and different uh you know frogs and stuff like that there's so much to see if you come up this way you can still get more of a glimpse of lima island as well 
seating area here and then over here you've got capuchins outdoors you've got uh, tapirs outdoors it's just so much to see in the south american area ladies and gents and uh, this is a very hustle bustle area so it might be a case of having to press pause again which would be unfortunate because i want you to be able to see the animals moving around um this here is a walkway for our jaguars they have uh, two separate parts of their exhibit one here one at the back um it's it's nice it's cool uh it it the, the, the rock work and stuff, it took a little while for it to grow on me, but um, it, it has now, and I really, really like it. Um, I'm sort of waiting here to see what we're like. Is it going to work on play? There's lots of people. Uh, but yeah, we, we walk this way into South America. Information even for the Jaguars here, mainly because you will see the Jaguars walking overhead, and uh, it's good to know what's going on. Yeah, we're going to... We're going to pause, unfortunately, ladies and gents, because uh, we're just going to be here all day otherwise. Uh, but yeah, you come over this away, and as you can see, it is heaving because the Jaguars are a very popular animal. I think they are the most popular animal. Uh, lots of education, as you can see. Uh, meet the Jaguars, uh, because obviously we do have a, a pair of Jags in here. Uh, this is coal. This was obviously heavy, heavily requested um, to have a, a black... Uh, Jaguar there is another one in here could be over in the other side to be fair uh, but yeah as you can see really dense foliage uh, I was inspired oh actually it's boxed up of course oh I didn't want to move unbox there we go job done oh there's three Jaguars because uh, we do have we did have a youngster who has obviously reached maturity and I, I need to ask the question how did you get up there but Okay, we'll let it go. But yeah, really heavily foliaged and inspired by the uh, Amir Leopard habitat at Colchester Zoo, which is just heaving with foliage, and I wanted to go down that way again. So as you can see, they go up their walkway, and they go through the building. I'll show you that in a moment, because they do have sort of a, a viewing area in there um, as a result. Um, and uh, and then they come out the other side, so I will show you all that. Uh, apologies for having to have this on Paul's gang, but I wanted to be able to give everybody a tour. People that are new to the channel, you know, you wouldn't have seen this before, and I want you to fall in love with it, and uh, as much as the people that have been here uh, during the course of the whole thing. Now, this was an old factory. The story is that this was an old factory, and uh, it was repurposed because it's a listed building. Um, hence all of the plaques and whatnot uh, and the way it looks and the detail and uh, being completely different to the rest of the zoo uh, and as we head on in this is our tropical house ladies and gents so it's really really heavily foliaged lots going on uh, we've got our amazon river fish tank over this way um, looking very very nice uh, people having a, a little look uh, over this side we've got the frogs of the forest so we've got all the different species of frogs and whatnot um, over here uh, clearly something's broke in there because smoky smoke and that needs fixing um so yeah we've got all of this stuff going on uh you continue this way uh we've got some knoll exhibits as well stuff that we built that just to kind of fill space and whatnot and then over here is a viewing area to the jaguars paddock over this side now over this side is where their uh indoor quarters are uh, they're there kind of at the back hidden to the public but yeah this is the indoor quarters for our jaguars so yeah, very, very nice, and uh, a beautiful little thing. This is their walkway. Um, it's wider than I would have liked, but that's just the game. It's not, not, not a lot you can do about it, unfortunately, ladies and gents. Um, and that's the Jaguars walkway there. Um, so you can actually spot the Jaguars walking on by, uh, if you are lucky. Got our tree frogs in here. Um, there's some, some more sort of amphibians and whatnot. And then from here, we move on into the main room, the main tropical room. And uh, I'm going to have to leave it paused in this room, unfortunately, because, again, it's just the, the way things are. Uh, so upstairs is uh, is this kind of like the viewing gallery. And then down here is like a, a different way of looking at it. Um, Knoll habitats, again, kind of like using the space up. Uh, and then we've got this beautiful sort of area here where you can sit and learn about the south americas uh tapirs capuchins that's what's housed in here you can get a nice sort of ground level look at the animals uh down this way 
um, lots of sort of uh, viewing area. You walk round and there's another sort of viewing area over here. Um, clearly these people can see something uh, walking about and running around and whatnot. Oh, there you go, tapir in the pool. Uh, and then if you do go back, um, if you do go back this way and you go up the stairs, um, then you go to the viewing gallery. Um, and this is an area that a lot of the people that help build this project absolutely love. Now, big Jaguar sort of corner over here because the Jags do walk by. If you're lucky, you get to see the animals. Um, uh, there's lots and lots of beautiful details in this building. I really love the way the roof came out with the glass and whatnot. Um, this is a lift, by the way, if anyone's wondering what that is. And then, yeah, this is the, the viewing gallery where you get to see the building in all of its glory basically the all the beautiful foliage um you get to see the animals from a, a different uh, viewing perspective and you even get to see the monkeys all running around as you can see look one on the vine there and they will run all the way up here to this because that takes them to their outdoor area um which is pretty cool and pretty uh pretty nice little thing but yeah just a nice little pool for our tapirs i believe there's two adult tapirs in here and we've got two adult tapirs outdoors so yeah which is pretty cool. We've built it so that it, su it suggests to you that this is the tapir's indoor area, uh, where, but they can, if they go this way, uh, this takes them to their outdoor area. So it's all joined up. Uh, it is all joined up. Um, but because of the capuchins, we've had to do it in a way that suggests that uh, they are locked indoors, unfortunately, because the capuchins, if they got outdoors, they would just go running around the zoo and they would escape. So yeah, it had to be built in a very kind of clever way. Um, this here is all the backstage. Uh, so this little runway would go to the capuchins indoor area. Um, it's just for show that we haven't actually built it. And then here you'll see that's to the Jaguars. Um, we've got kitchen areas, uh, Jaguars again. And then obviously there's a door up here that takes you into the main sort of rainforest room. But yeah, there's lots to going on backstage as well to, you know, keep in with all that realism. Um, but yeah, that's the tropical house. There's not really much more that needs to be said. Lots of education and whatnot. It's a beautiful building. It took three weeks to complete the, the uh, tropical area. Not this building, but the whole tropical area as we are about to sort of continue it now. Because if you go out this door here, you are still in sort of South America. This is the Capuchins outdoor area. Uh, as you can see, there's a couple of glass viewing areas. Um, nice little sort of water trough. But they do come outdoors as well. Uh, and they come out through this little, this little hole here. And uh, yeah, this is their sort of climbing frames and whatnot outdoors. Um, if you go around this way, there's just lots of like places to sit and enjoy. And uh, yeah, you got your tapirs outdoors, and the tapirs have got like a little sort of water room that you can go inside uh, as well and enjoy the animals. So if you was to carry on around here again, another sort of viewing area to those capuchins. And then yeah, you go in here, and this is the tapirs sort of uh, water room. Uh, so you come inside, this is sort of like their hard shelter, but you can come in here, you can be quiet, and then you can take a look at the tapirs swimming around, and this is sort of like their indoor habitat as well. So just lots of different ways uh, to view the animals in this zoo, um, and uh, yeah, just been a, a, a lot of fun to build, basically. And that's South America, so you carry on walking around here, you've got your seating areas, and it's really lush and beautiful. Again, more of these sort of snack carts. I really should have brought your attention to these. These are our little education ports. Uh, these are gonna go all over the zoo. It's just a really clever way of disguising these ugly education boards. Uh, but these go all over the zoo, and they'll have pamphlets and whatnot on them, and it's just a nice way to kind of disguise things. And then you come up this way, and uh, this is the last of the sort of South American animals. Uh, but as you kind of walk up here, you've got the anteaters. Now, um, what we've done with the anteaters is we've made an anteater dark room. This is crazy. This is the busiest I've ever seen, this building. But we made an anteater dark room. So I need to actually turn the lights down for you to appreciate this building. Um, so what will happen is uh, the red lights will come on for our guests. Um, so they will obviously enjoy it like this um, and then as you come in here it's more of a night view uh, so you get to enjoy the anteaters in a very very different way um, and it's just a, a really nice way to view the animals there we go both anteaters are down here must be a food or something there um, and then if you come up this way 
Um, it goes to their outdoor area, which I will take you to in a moment. But yeah, this is the Dark House, the, uh, the uh, Anteater Dark House, which I absolutely love because Anteaters are a nocturnal animal. So um, yeah, we, we really love that. And uh, I will obviously turn the lights back on for everybody. Uh, but yeah, that's the Anteaters. It's so busy. I can't believe how busy that, that building is. Um, as you come up this way, you kind of get your final sort of glimpse of the Jaguars. Uh, and we're now about to sort of enter sort of North America uh, after the Anteaters outdoor area uh, is done and dusty. Now, what I am going to do, I'm going to attempt to play now. We should be able to because not that many people come up this way yet. Um, here, we've got a nice little pit stop, uh, bathroom and some vending machines, somewhere to sit, um, take take a rest. Uh, that way goes to the backstage stuff. Uh, I might as well do this with you first. So this is all backstage. This is all behind the scenes of the of the tropical house. Uh, so that's where all the animals are sort of housed and whatnot. Uh, if you continue up this way, it all joins up. There's a nice bridge there, but it joins up to the North American backstage stuff as well. So yes... Uh, Nicely thought out, ladies and gentlemen. Um, but anyway, this is the Anteaters outdoors. Um, as you can see, there is one guy out here. Um, but yeah, just a little pool. And just really lovely and lush and just really natural. And uh, yeah, it's nice. Now, it doesn't seem that busy up here. It doesn't get that busy up here. Um, we walk around this way. This is a lot of backstage area uh, in here, which I will bring your attention to. But we come around this way and we now enter... Our North American area. Now, this is uh, this has been the latest part that we've been building in the project. Uh, you will see, sort of like it's so so lush. We wanted it to feel like very dense and overgrown, like an American meadow. Uh, and this uh, here is like an American plain. So we've got um, our pronghorn and our bison in here. Lovely sort of uh, entrance way into North America. Um, as we walk on through, you'll see plenty of sort of information boards and whatnot telling you which way to go. Now, this beautiful building here uh, is not only a restaurant, but also a sort of celebration of North America. There's lots of exhibits and stuff in there, and there's also a gift shop at the back. Um, and it was, uh, it's been one of my most challenging builds to date because we, you know, I decided to do the level change because we didn't have much sort of terrain level change in the in the zoo and so we decided upon that um so it's quite a challenge but i think it's really really turned out nice absolutely love it um and there are really subtle angles to this building it looks quite square but um but there are some really really subtle things going on so i'll take you in here first so you can take a look at our education center so as we come inside you will see there's just lots and lots going on it's a celebration of, uh, you know, all things that sort of maybe existed once upon a time or exist now. Uh, this was done recently. Um, this is a, a, a sort of a, a bear skeleton, a, a, a prehistoric bear skeleton. It was done by a lad called uh, Carlos, I do believe. And I have to give him a big shout out and say thank you for doing that. Um, we're not quite finished in here. We do need to add some railings and whatnot um, to some of the exhibits just to make sure things aren't being touched. But... This building is beautiful. It is a thing of beauty. And uh, people do use it as well because the education is all hidden in the walls and whatnot. But uh, you kind of walk around this way. Now, you can go this way into the Vista Cafe or you can go up there to the gift shop. Um, uh, there's still some stuff, that uh, bits left for more exhibits. Um, but I like to leave things sort of empty as well because as time goes on, things would get changed and whatnot. But uh, yeah, you go down this way um and you've got sort of like this is meant to be a water fountain but i haven't been able to make the water work here yet uh it's a work in progress but you've got the uh, gift shop up here um which is really really nice just really low key if you go this way this is staff staff exit this way um and they come around here uh and there's a staff room there and then they go out this way and it takes them backstage basically and i'll show you that in a moment ladies and gentlemen um but yeah we'll go back here this is the gift shop and as you can see there is a a point here of uh, entry and exit but if we go down these steps you'll see there's a bathroom here a toilet there and then you go down these steps and this takes you into the vista cafe so this is sort of like the north american restaurant uh not that busy as you can see at the moment but this area unfortunately just isn't getting as busy and i think I'm going to have to add some transport to get people up here 
easier. I think the guests are just getting tired, and that's why they're not able to get up here that quick. But not only do you have a seating area inside with the with the restaurants and whatnot, um, outside we have um, a sort of viewing platform. So you can come up here and take a look at the animals uh, over there, the bison and whatnot, uh, all running around and enjoying their day. But yeah, it's a really, really nice uh, habitat. Uh, to be looking out on uh, you come around this way just a bit of theming and whatnot seating areas and stuff and yeah it's just it's coming along quite nicely uh, this area um, this is uh, the best probably viewing area to come and look at these animals as you can see it's a wide open space big, biggest exhibit we've got in the zoo uh, but, but, but for definitely for some of the biggest animals with the bison all running around and whatnot really really natural I'll zoom out as well so you can take a better look at it. Nice pool. Joins up to our canal that's, uh, you know, man-built in the zoo. Um, you know, we've got a little shaded area over at the back. This is their main sort of shelter and habitat. And, um, yeah, just lots and lots of area for the animals. Uh, their backstage, you've obviously got a cattle run to move the animals out. And then sort of a quarantine sort of, uh, you know, area back here as well. Um, but yeah, I love this habitat. It's quite a busy habitat. Lots going on, lots of animals running around and whatnot. Um, and yeah, it's pretty pretty nice. Now we're going to come to the end of the tour now, really, as we come down this way. Um, as you can see, uh, the, you, you get a glimpse of what's to come. You've got your, your, your wolves and you've got your grizzly bears. Uh, before you get there, though, you've got some knoll exhibits. Uh, I can imagine these sort of housing birds and things like that. Uh, but we added these knoll exhibits to kind of just do a bit of a space filler. Um, I think they've come out really nice, actually. Uh, so we've got one there and we've got one here as well. And uh, if you go back here, there's a little backstage area as well how our staff get in and out of those areas with some seating and stuff now I guess unfortunately just don't come up here at the moment and I, I, I'm not really sure why they don't come up here I think it's a tiredness issue and I think I might have to add like a bathroom or something up here with some vending machines to try and force them up this way uh, but again you can see these fences have been put up because obviously this is the end of the zoo even more exhibits will come soon but this is our grizzly and our wolf habitat and this is like I say the end of the tour it's been a very long video if you've stuck with me for the whole time I absolutely love you and I commend you for getting through it um there will obviously in the description box be sort of like timestamps. So if there's certain animals you want to look at, uh, then you can do it that way, my friends. But um, but yeah, this is still the planting. A lot of the planting in the zoo, I should add, is unfinished. And it's unfinished for reasons. I don't want to completely finish the planting off straight away because the foliage would get denser and denser as time goes on. So I like to add the planting slowly over time. And also planting is just one of those jobs that is so time consuming that you don't always get to it. But um, but let's take a look at this habitat. So I'll walk you through the way the guests would see it first and then I'll show you each habitat uh, on its own. The waterfall, by the way, is a bit janky because it's not finished. So I do just want to throw that out there. Uh, it does need finishing. Uh, but anyway, let's go in uh, this away. So first and foremost, you're met with uh, a couple of viewing areas, but uh, you're met with the meet the pack. So you've got information on the walls that we've got. This bit in the middle is actually a really nice way of us disguising those really ugly donation bins. Uh, so this is how you would donate if you wanted to adopt a wolf or support the you know wolf project and whatnot so yeah it's a really nice way to look at the walls down here all lovely and covered and then you come into this uh, central section and you can view not only the wolves but you can view the bears so you can view both animals uh, from here nice little seating area in the middle as well these guys have got stuck god knows how long they've been there doing the uh, doing the uh, the can can but uh, yeah you can see both sets of animals basically um, in from this area and you get a good view of that waterfall like i say it is a work in progress so uh i do need to get that finished off and then yeah if you walk this way and you walk up you get another viewing area uh you get a very different view of the animals this time um and again another here another uh you know way to look at the animals and again it's a higher view so you're getting a very different look on the animals you can see the walls all running around and then you've got this section which is more of a sort of it's like an education stop you can learn about you know all of the animals you walk around this way and you now get to view the bears uh, here 
Uh, the bears don't really come out much. They're always sleeping. But yeah, it's a good way to, to look at the bears. Um, and then you come up here into this central section. Now, eventually, I'm going to get uh, an education point here where the uh, the educators can talk to you about the animals and whatnot. Um, but yeah, this is a really, really good way to look at the animals. So you can like uh, view the animals from above um, in the habitats. As you can see, the two grizzlies are over that side and if you look over here then it's a good way to look at the wolves that are all hustling and bustling at the back at the moment so yeah it's just a really nice way to look at the animals and then you would take that route down there and it takes you out of the habitat now i'll show you the bears first this is how the bears are looking uh, this is their habitat uh, we did this thing with the window. We wanted it to be on this lovely, beautiful sort of pooled area. So you get to see the bears walking around the edge and sometimes splashing around in the water, which is really, really cool. Uh, it's really heavily, heavily foliaged. I need to put some tree protectors on um, these trees. Uh, definitely need to get that done. But other than that, it's a, it's a pretty cool habitat. Um, and uh, as you can see, they're enjoying a spot of lunch at the moment. Uh, if I walk up this way, Lots of different terrain differences in here. Um, but yeah, this is their backstage. This is the backstage and like their sleeping quarters. So this is um this is the bears sleeping quarters and backstage stuff. So it's all sort of in here. Um, and then we'll walk up this way. This is the keeper's way out onto the exhibit. We've got this central room here, which has got like the kitchen area where all the food is prepped. And then you come in this way again. This is the wolves area. So uh, that's how the keeper gets in. And then you've got all of the wolves sleeping quarters uh, this way. So we did it so it was all together. As you will see, there's a wolf indoors. Absolutely losing the plot. Oh, having a poop and playing with a ball. Multitasking uh, 101 by the Wolf Pack. Uh, <laughs> and then that's the way out. And you can go out both ends of the building. Um, let me show you the Wolves habitat so you can get a view on this. Uh, obviously, we do need these access points. We do have one over the other side as well for the bears. Um, but yeah, this is the Wolves habitat. It's very similar to the bears. They've just got more of a river system with a waterfall. Uh, just to kind of beautify the area up. The water actually continues all the way through, so it's one constant source of water, and the water pump is up here that kind of controls the whole area. Um, as you can see, how much look how much smoother the game works up this end where there's not a lot of people. Essentially, the biggest problem when you're trying to walk around and do a zoo tour when there's lots of people, that's, that's what my computer can't seem to deal with for, for whatever reason. And I have a good computer so it's a bit strange but yeah viewing area there and you can see how it's all been decorated uh really really nice higher walls at the backs and stuff and yeah once this is finished this is going to look really really pretty but it's a work in progress as i already said um but yeah the backstage area as well just to finish it off this is all the backstage for the bears and the wolves and whatnot um and uh, there's just lots going on a little more stuff here this is a veterinary clinic um we i feel like we needed another one so i put a veterinary clinic in up here and uh, as you can see all the roads all join up to other areas and obviously the pavements and whatnot will as well and that ladies and gentlemen is jemmy conservation park and what a beautiful beautiful project it has been uh, to build and take part in and i really hope you've enjoyed this tour like i've already said i'm not sure when the next episode of jammy will be but the minute that i get that problem sorted we will be back with more jcp building more zoo uh let me know what you thought of the tour let me know what you think of the zoo if you're new please consider subscribing and dropping a like on the video and let me know what you think as well i would love as many people as possible to be a part of this project but my friends i am done and adjusted it's a long old video this one but i hope you've enjoyed it till next time though my friends i salute you all stay humble stay safe and i will see you real real soon